Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about some of the dangers of serotonin and how to correct elevated serotonin levels using the popular Chinese herb, Ho Shu Wu. As I talk about frequently on our YouTube channel, sort of sporadically mentioned throughout the various videos and in more detail in videos like this, serotonin is not the feel-good, happy neurochemical that we have been taught it to be. In fact, serotonin couldn't be further from the opposite. It is one of the greatest neurochemical downers of all time. In fact, there's even old experiments that show injecting mice with serotonin leads to helplessness, fatigue or lethargy, and apathy. And there's one primary way in which serotonin achieves all of its ill effects. It's apathy-inducing biological effects, which is through the inhibition of cellular respiration, which in English means that it impairs your cell's ability to produce energy. So your cells respirate. They take in oxygen and glucose, they breathe it, they respirate it, and they oxidize the glucose to make something called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which is basically the major energy substrate that your cells use for every function. And through its energy inhibiting effects, it can lead to hypothyroidism. In fact, serotonin is known to be elevated in hypothyroidism, and it can lead to even liver disorders and brain disorders like Alzheimer's disease. Now keep in mind that all of your organs, every tissue and part of your body needs ATP or energy to thrive. So ultimately, by suppressing the metabolism, serotonin is going to lead to just about every degenerative disease and illness you could think of. So by impairing mitochondrial energy production or respiration, serotonin is actually going to induce a stress. In fact, as seen in this study, and as I've mentioned before, serotonin actually stimulates the production of cortisol, the classic stress hormone, which actually impairs thyroid function. It deactivates your thyroid hormone, causing a hypothyroid-like condition. So the T3, the active form of thyroid hormone, becomes something called reverse T3, a deactivated or an inactivated form of thyroid hormone. And stress, as we know, suppresses the metabolism. And one of the major key features of a low metabolic rate or hypothyroidism is poor circulation. And one of serotonin's classic features is the restriction of healthy blood flow. It specifically tightens the capillaries and the veins that lead to the brain and the uterus, which can lead to brain congestion, things like migraines or chronic headaches, as well as the overall degeneration of the brain which is likely why serotonin is elevated and implicated in things like Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. Now to top it all off, as I've touched on briefly, serotonin actually stimulates the production of cortisol, and cortisol stimulates the production of estrogen. There's a vicious feedback loop here now because estrogen stimulates the production of serotonin. So high serotonin levels, elevated serotonin levels can be difficult to break. It's a very vicious, nasty cycle where serotonin is stimulating cortisol, cortisol stimulating estrogen, and estrogen stimulating serotonin again. Fortunately, there are simple things that you can do to break the vicious cycle of stress involving elevated levels of serotonin, cortisol, estrogen, and other stress mediators that tend to be elevated when in this state of stress and disease. And one of the simple things that I would recommend experimenting with is Hoshu Wu supplementation. Now, Hoshu Wu has a specific quality and a unique ability to inhibit the enzyme monoamine oxidase B. Now, keep in mind that MAO inhibitors have been used for a long time to try to treat depression, schizophrenia, psychosis, and other mental and mood imbalances without much success. And this is because a lot of them focus on the MAOA inhibition, which is the enzyme that breaks down and degrades serotonin as well as dopamine and other neurochemicals in the body. Because of this, it's going to actually result in an increased production of serotonin. So the MAOA inhibitors are actually aiming to achieve heightening levels of serotonin. They're trying to boost the production of serotonin. Very similarly to the way that SSRIs are trying to increase the lifetime of serotonin in your brain. However, this would be a bad idea. You don't want to increase the lifespan, the production, and the longevity of serotonin. We want to regulate it and keep it in check. Now, one of the greatest natural antagonists to serotonin is dopamine. Dopamine is truly a feel-good chemical, and the whole dopaminogenic system is generally associated with 
health and well-being and has many anti-stress mechanisms that tend to boost the metabolic rate, where the mechanisms of serotonin in that whole system tend to oppose dopamine suppressing the metabolic rate. Now getting back to Hosha Wu, as mentioned, Hosha Wu has the unique ability to inhibit MAOB. And MAOB is the enzyme or protein responsible for degrading dopamine in a compound known as phenylethylamine. Now naturally, by preventing the degradation or the breaking down of dopamine, this means we're gonna have more elevated levels of dopamine, which is beneficial in of itself for many reasons, but specifically in regards to this video, this means that dopamine levels are gonna be able to antagonize serotonin and keep it in check. However, MAOB inhibitors also inhibit the breakdown of phenylethylamine. Doing this can actually cause a serotonin deficiency. So MAOB inhibitors, in other words, are fantastic for regulating serotonin because not only does it generally boost dopamine production, which is again a natural antagonist to serotonin, but it also is going to induce a serotonin deficiency by preventing the breakdown of phenylethylamine. So this is a very beneficial herb overall for not just boosting dopamine and enhancing the mood, but also for preventing serotonin levels from becoming chronically elevated or being unregulated, which again, going back to the first portion of this video, would suppress energy production, it would suppress the overall metabolic rate, and it could lead to a whole host of systemic disorders related to stress, inflammation, and accelerated aging. Now really quick before we go, since hair loss is such a popular topic here on the YouTube channel, and Hosha Wu is a classic or revered herb for restoring the health of the hair, perhaps one of the untalked about mechanisms of Hosha Wu and its ability to regrow the hair is these mechanisms we're talking about here and now. You see, elevated serotonin levels, as we discuss in detail in our Forever Healthy Hair course, is one of the major contributing factors to hair loss and for a couple of different reasons. First and foremost, like any other organ in your body, your hair follicle needs energy, and serotonin is obviously going to impair your hair follicle's ability to get that adequate energy. But as I've mentioned in other videos, serotonin tends to increase the production of nitric oxide, and elevated nitric oxide is going to also degrade energy metabolism and impair your hair follicle's ability to get the adequate energy that it needs. So in other words, high serotonin tends to cause high nitric oxide, and both of these impair good cellular energy production, which can lead to inflammation in a fibrotic state. So if you're somebody struggling with scalp fibrosis, it's possible that there is elevated levels of serotonin and nitric oxide. Not to mention that these things also tend to be elevated by estrogen and also elevate cortisol, the two other major stress hormones involved in all sorts of hair loss. So not only is Hoshu going to be benefiting the whole dopamine system and regulating these neurochemicals in the body, but it can have a systemic benefit throughout your whole body. In one way, it might be contributing to the regrowth of the hair that isn't so commonly talked about, at least not in traditional Chinese medicine, is by regulating and suppressing the production of serotonin, which could lead to hair loss by generally impairing your hair's ability to get adequate ATP or energy and therefore causing inflammation. However, if you'd like to know more about the specific roles of serotonin and nitric oxide in the pathogenesis of hair loss, be sure to check out our Forever Healthy Hair course where we go into greater detail and give you a wide variety of different things you can do to start correcting the issue from a physiological standpoint, something rooted in sound science and not nutritional or dietary dogmas. However, that does bring this video to a close. The very quick recap is that serotonin, despite what we've been taught, is not a feel-good neurochemical. It is a direct mediator of stress and inflammation. And the simplest way to keep your serotonin levels in check is to optimize the whole dopaminogenic system, which you can do through a variety of different lifestyle and dietary and supplemental regimens and protocols. And we have tons of videos here on the channel that can teach you how to do that. Otherwise, one simple herb that you can start implementing or experimenting with would be Hoshu Wu. Hoshu Wu does inhibit the breakdown of dopamine and can induce a serotonin deficiency. And that's going to be very beneficial for anybody trying to regulate a wide variety of health issues, everything from mental mood disorders to brain related issues, energy issues, or even hair issues. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody that might find it helpful, and as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet. And if you're interested in supplementing with Hoshu Wu or learning more about it, or if you want to check out our Forever Healthy Hair course or any of our other online courses, be sure to check out our online tonic herb shop and wellness academy in the description box below.